Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video, we're going to talk about 2020 Mr. Olympia. What? Already? It's only been 3 weeks since 2019 Mr. Olympia, but that actually tells you how interesting 2019 Mr. Olympia really was. So, due to the lack of the competitors, the top competitors, the best ones in the business, like Big Ramy, like Phil Heath, like Sean Roden, like many others, the quality of the show wasn't exactly high due to the lack of the competitors, but there was this element of surprise, no defending Mr. Olympia champion, which kind of made it exciting, but really it wasn't that much of a surprise when Brandon won, pretty much everybody knew that, everybody expected that to happen. So, unfortunately, three weeks after this Mr. Olympia, we don't really have much to talk about, really. So, we can talk about the next Mr. Olympia, which is going to be absolutely insane. So, firstly, we have two Mr. Olympia champions, the best bodybuilders in today's bodybuilding, right? Phil Heath and Sean Roden. They are the top contenders, they are the Mr. Olympias, and they are very well rested. Now, is Phil Heath going to compete? That's a questionable topic. Is Sean Rodden going to get unbanned? That's also very questionable. But I think it's going to happen. I mean, I can make a separate video speculating about this. But let's just be optimistic. Let's just believe. Let's believe these guys are going to compete. So we have two Mr. Olympia champions who are very well rested. They didn't compete for a year. So these guys, if they compete, they're gonna be at their best. And we can see Sean Rodden hitting a vacuum pose. So at the Mr. Olympia, if he does it, that's gonna be insane. And if Phil Heath comes and if he fixes his hernia problem and maybe learns how to control his stomach a little bit better, it's gonna be a better Phil Heath than without all the pressure that he had being the defending Mr. Olympia champion and being hated by the audience quite a bit and also not having to compete a year prior, is gonna be a new refreshed version of Phil Heath. Now the next guy, that is also a top contender, 2017 Mr. Olympia runner-up, and the biggest bodybuilder in the world probably today, one of the freakiest guys, Big Ramy, also well rested, did not compete in 2019 at all. He announced that he's going to compete at the Arnold Classic 2019, but you know what, Sean Roden announced that as well, so if he collides against Sean Roden, I don't really see him ending up victorious, probably Sean is going to take that title away, but Probably later Big Ramy will, I don't know, gather enough points or just win another show, probably win next show and qualify for the Mr. Olympia. So I think it's pretty safe to say that we'll see Big Ramy at the Mr. Olympia 2020, I'm pretty sure. So I mentioned three bodybuilders and I didn't mention the current Mr. Olympia champion in this 2020 lineup. So yeah, Brandon Curry will be there, he will be defending his title against these guys. Will he be able to hold on to it? Well, if Sean Rodden comes, if Big Ramy comes, and if Phil Heath comes, I just don't see the scenario where Brandon Curry beats all three of them. He can beat Big Ramy rather easily if Big Ramy comes off, like he was last year, 2018, where Brandon beat him by one spot, but he beat him. Big Ramy was definitely too fat or watery, he was way off. And Sean Rodden, I don't think Brandon Curry ever beat Sean Rodden or Phil Heath, of course. And if everything goes well for these guys, if they come in their usual shape, I think again they will beat Brandon Curry. Even though Brandon is improved, I think his legs are just way behind and Sean will definitely expose that and conditioning as well, same thing with Phil. So I'm pretty sure Sean and Phil will beat Brandon Curry. I think Brandon will be third at the best. But now let's talk about Hari Chopin. So Hari previously trained for 212. So in 2019, he was mm, a little bit north of 212 pounds. But still, it wasn't Harry Chopin that trains for the Open. Now, he has a full year to train for the Mr. Olympia. He got his visa and he can, you know, cool his head off. He doesn't have to think about that anymore. He can just relax, train hard and train to be in the Open. As the judge, the head judge, Steve Weinberger said, he needs more mass in his upper body. So he needs to do some growing upstairs. His legs are just perfect, but that upper body, those arms especially, can be a little bit bigger. But we'll see what happens. If he knows, and he does, that he's going to prep for the Mr. Olympia Open Division, he will train harder and he will have more freedom to grow more. So he will be bigger, 
And that would be an interesting thing to see. How will he fare against these other guys when he is actually training for the Mr. Olympia for the Open and when he has a full year to cool his head and just to train for that one thing. But hey, what is probably more interesting than Harry Chopin training for the Open, that rhymes, is Flex Lewis training for the Open and that's gonna be something I want to see so bad. Flex was very, very dominant as 2-12 champion. But, you know, in the offseason, when you looked at him, he looks like he can be in the open. But then, when the Mr. Olympia comes, he shrinks. He shrinks too much. He comes much flatter and much, much smaller. And he's in the offseason because I'm sure he had some trouble making that weight. Now, without trying to lose so much weight in the last minute, and with the ability to actually grow as much as he wants in the offseason, and he had a two years off, he didn't compete this year at all, so one whole year without competing, and basically two years, two off seasons to grow, he will be crazy. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Flex Lewis without any boundaries, with one sole goal, with one aim, and that is competing and winning, possibly 2020 Mr. Olympia Open. That's going to be a very dangerous game and I'm really excited to see Flex finally in the Open. And I want to see him, how he compares to the other guys, the other Open guys. I saw him standing next to Phil after the awards, but he just seemed significantly smaller than Phil. But that's training for 212. Now when he's training for the Open, he will have much more freedom now. He can carb up for a couple of days. He doesn't have to wait for the wanes and then to carb up. So that's a huge plus. He can relax in the offseason, he can try to grow, he actually needs to try to grow because he needs to get bigger if he wants to be competitive in the open. And um, that's gonna happen, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be like 10 to 15 pounds heavier, sheer muscle size I'm talking about, in the open in 2020. So he has the chance to crack the top 3 in Mr. Olympia really, but it will be very hard because the lineup will be super competitive. The head judge, Steve Weinberger, in that interview with the RX Muscles said that Bonac could have won the Mr. Olympia if he showed up as big as he usually is. He was significantly smaller than Mr. Olympia. He came very conditioned, but he wasn't at his usual size. The judges, the head judge, Steve Weinberger said that if he was bigger, he would have beaten Brandon, probably because of the legs. But that didn't happen, and hopefully it will happen next year. Without Neil Hill, without his coach, it's gonna be troublesome. But maybe he will figure it out. This is his first year on his own. Or with his buddy helping him out. Without a coach, without Neil Hill. So we'll see what happens with uh, William Bonek. But I don't really have high hopes for this guy because he kind of achieved his maximum so far. His structure doesn't allow him to grow anymore, really. He can only manipulate how full or how shredded, how lean or how much flatter will he be. So that's the only question. So if he comes perfectly full and perfectly lean, he could win 2019 Mr. Olympia lineup. But 2020, with all the possible contenders, the top high quality contenders, I just don't really see him ending up victorious in that sort of lineup because that's really high quality lineup. He can, you know, crack the top three if some of the guys are off. But to win it, I don't think so. I don't think that's likely to happen. What about Rolly Winkler, though, the people's champ for 2018? Well, in 2018, that was his best version ever, obviously. He was third. He was third place. And later, 2019, I mean, this year right now, was horrible year for him. First of all, we saw him in the Arnold Classic 2019 looking like a water buffalo, like a blob of muscle. No separation, no definition, no cuts, nothing whatsoever, and he placed fifth in a horrible lineup. Then, later, the Arnold Classic Australia, he was a bit sharper, but only a little bit, still didn't place very well. And now at the Mr. Olympia, again, he was off. He wasn't as horrible as he was the Arnold, but he was definitely not as sharp as he needed to be to win the Mr. Olympia, and he was the, the favorite. Many, many people had him winning the Mr. Olympia, myself included. I was thinking, I was saying, actually, if he comes sharp, he will beat Brandon Curry and he will win. But the chances of him coming sharp are not very high because he's not known for being the most consistent bodybuilder. And that came true, he came off and he placed fifth this year. He was beaten by Dexter Jackson, who is about to turn 50 next month in November, actually. So that's crazy. And so I need to mention him as well. Dexter Jackson. Just, I don't know, you cannot sign this guy off, never. Until it happens, you just need to stop doubting this guy. 
he took fourth place at the Mr. Olympia, beating some of the favorites like Rolly Winkler. So this guy is an absolute madness. It's just crazy how much can he accomplish and <laughs> considering the fact how old is he, it's just a question for how long? How long will he be able to do this to the younger guys? Well, who the hell knows? Maybe he wins the Mr. Olympia next year. So I need to stop. Everybody needs to stop doubting him. But if you're gonna be realistic, probably not better than top three. And that's like the best, the best case scenario if he makes even more progress this year. We should also mention Josh Lenartovic, who just started his off season. He started growing once again and he's healthy. So next year we'll see him competing. Now he's not exactly a choice to win the Mr. Olympia 2020. Probably not, probably like top 5, top 6, but he will give us a show for sure, he's a freak, he's one of the biggest guys of today, so I'm looking forward to seeing him as well at the Mr. Olympia, and maybe Steve Kuklo comes sharper, maybe he surprises us all, we also need to see Patrick Moore, how will he do, he made a promise, he said that he's gonna get bigger this year. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him bigger, but he will not get bigger by any cost. He will try to keep his lines, that's a priority. If he can keep his lines and grow bigger and keep the conditioning as well, that will be insane. So, as much as 2019 Mr. Olympia was uneventful, that's how much 2020 Mr. Olympia will be eventful. And it's going to be one of, the, one of the best Mr. Olympias in the past decade or so. So I'm really looking forward to it and I will be there, I will be here you know, making videos for you guys, so please subscribe to my channel, you don't want to miss out on any of that, and before it happens, I'm going to make a ton of videos about it, I'm going to speculate about the placings, who will be there, who will not be there, whenever I get some information, I will make videos for you guys, so please subscribe, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, and tell me what you think, do you think 2020 Mr. Olympia will be the best one in a decade or whatever, whatever the take is, tell me down below in the comment section, like the video once again, and thank you so much guys for watching the videos, all the best, bye bye.